Hey friends, I hope y'all are having a great day today. If you're new here, my name's Alicia and today's video is another grocery budget challenge where I fed my family of seven for only $5 for one day. And I also wanted to quickly say that if you or your family are struggling for food, please reach out and get help. Uh, you can call 211 if you live in the US or in Canada and they will give you a full list of resources uh, that are available to you in your area. And I hope you'll enjoy. Here's a look at everything that we got. I'm going to leave a full list with prices in the description box for y'all. I'm also going to type out all the recipes. Unless it was a recipe that I got from offline. In that case I will link it. But we got two pounds of brown rice. One pound of chickpeas or garbanzo beans. One lime. One jalapeno that was supposed to be a poblano pepper. But they substituted it for a jalapeno and it worked out just fine. One pound of carrots and one bunch of kale. And that is everything. So I'm starting off by cooking all of my rice. And for brown rice, you need two and a half cups of water to one cup of rice. So in two pounds, you get about five cups of rice. So I did 12 and a half cups of water. I brought that up to a rolling boil and let it boil like that for a couple of minutes. Then I put the lid on and brought it down to a medium and let it boil like or cook like that for 15 minutes. Then I turned the heat off and let it sit for another 15 minutes. And this is what it looked like whenever it was done. And it turned out perfect. While I was working on my rice, I also got started on my chickpeas or garbanzo beans. I washed them, picked through them, and then added them to my instant pot with seven cups of water and cook them for 30 minutes and just let them sit until lunch. For breakfast, I'm making a rice porridge or a congee. I'm probably saying that terribly wrong, but I got the idea from someone else who did a grocery budget challenge. I'm going to leave their video linked in the description box for y'all, but it looked really good, so I really wanted to try it. And it tasted fabulous, although I didn't make it right. And it's probably very untraditional. I don't, I don't know. But it was delicious nonetheless. And I'm also only making this for two people. Our breakfast and our lunch I only made for two people. But dinner I did make for everyone. And I froze the extra rice and the other ingredients. The extras from those I use to show y'all an extra idea if that makes sense it'll make sense here in a little bit I accidentally dropped my lime in there but it was okay so I zested my lime by using my vegetable peeler and then I chopped that up and that's what you see there I only used half the lime for this and I did not let it boil as long as you're supposed to because you're supposed to let it break down completely and be like a porridge but I was hungry so I didn't let it boil that long and it tasted fabulous for lunch, I am making a chickpea fried rice, and the oil I'm using is actually leftover uh, hamburger grease. I usually would actually throw that in the trash, admittedly, but I've been actually saving it lately because it comes in handy. And I just keep it in the fridge in a separate jar from my bacon grease because bacon grease is like gold. And this actually adds really good flavor to your meal as well it kind of tasted like we had ground beef but of course you could use any kind of oil or butter or you could even just use some water and kind of uh, steam the carrots a little bit or you can have them raw too if that if you like that but I just chopped up one small carrot and as you can see my pan was way too hot but we were actually kind of busy on this day so I didn't let these cook for nearly as long as I normally would then I'm just going to add a couple servings of rice to the pan. And we actually had leftover because I miscalculated what two servings was. But um, I'm just also going to add some chickpeas, some lime juice. And I forgot to press record on the chickpeas to add them in. But I added in one half of a cup. And then here I am squeezing the lime juice in and then I'm going to add some soy sauce I don't remember if I already said that <laughs> just a little bit just to give it some good flavor 
like I said before, I try not to use too much pantry stuff. I'm also going to be adding in a little bit of sriracha because sriracha is so good and I like a little heat with my food. If you do not, then you do not have to add that. It's completely optional. If you don't have soy sauce, then you could also add some uh, salt and pepper and it would still be really good, especially with that squeeze of lime. That lime just made the whole day better. <laughs> it was so good. And I'm just going to let this cook for another minute, just stirring it around, kind of getting some of the rice browned up a little bit. And this was delicious. We actually had some extra. I think I already said that though. For dinner, I am making a chickpea and brown rice vegetable soup. I'm going to leave the amounts of everything in the description box so it's easier for y'all to follow along with the recipe to be able to see it at least. But I'm starting off by making some broth. I added chicken bouillon and vegetable bouillon because I remembered that I had that vegetable bouillon. Then I'm adding in half the lime and half the lemon zest. I'd already used the other half um, of the squeezed lime. That lime had already been squeezed into the fried rice. And then I'm adding in the kale stems, some of the carrots that I chopped. I didn't peel them. And then... There's the rest of the kale stems. I'm also going to be adding in the kale, the um, chickpeas, and also some of the rice. And I also fished out the half of the lime. I didn't leave it in there for too very long before getting it out. Just wanted the lime flavor to come out of the lime, and it did, and it was delicious. I'm so glad that I did that. I forgot to press record on the chickpeas again, but I'm adding in some more. You'll also want to salt and pepper this to taste, and if you have any other favorite seasonings, you could also add those in as well, of course. I just stuck with the broth and salt and pepper. Here's the rice, and I'm just going to let this cook for another few minutes. That way everything kind of has time to come together, and this soup was fabulous. I love soup. I'm not even a fan of chickpeas or brown rice, to be quite honest, and this day was just, it blew me away. I love both of them now, I guess. It was delicious. So even if I would have made breakfast and lunch for all seven of us, then we would have still had um, chickpeas and carrots left over. And of course, I could have just added more to the meals, but I figured it would make a good snack. So I'm showing y'all a couple of different different snack options that y'all can make with the carrots and chickpeas. We wouldn't have had enough left over to make both, but I'm just showing y'all a little bit of variety. So I'm going to, of course, leave this in the description, but you're going to add the lime. I'm adding in the lime plus some zest, water, vinegar, sugar, salt, uh, and I'm adding in some dill. And then you're supposed to just pour this on top of your carrots in a jar. I want mine to be a little bit more softer because, you know, in theory, we're going to be eating this the same day. Although we didn't. We ate it the next day because nobody was really hungry for them. But they were really good. Um, I don't think they needed the sugar. I just like dill pickles. I don't like the bread and butter. But this is how they turned out. They were delicious. The next snack is is some roasted chickpeas. My oldest had actually recently asked me to make some roasted chickpeas, so I thought this was the perfect opportunity to try them out. I chose to season mine with some popcorn seasoning, the cheese flavor, and then some oil. You could, you know, season them with salt and pepper, or just salt, or any seasonings that you have on hand that are your favorite, I would use those. I just baked them in the oven. That is the only picture I got of them before they were devoured. You could also make hummus and cut the carrots into carrot sticks and dip them in the hummus. For this, I just took the chickpeas along with a little bit of the aquafaba, lime juice, Cajun two-step, garlic powder, and onion powder. You can season this in any way that you like. Then, of course, I just pulsed it in the food processor. To be honest, none of us are real big fans of hummus. My kids love the dessert hummus, but we did eat this because I made it and we don't let things get to waste. 
So now I'm going to show you all a couple of dessert ideas that y'all can make with the leftover aquafaba. Y'all can actually use this in place of eggs in a couple of recipes, or well, in any recipe, I think. Um, but I'm going to show you all a couple of dessert ideas that only take some pantry staples. So start off with the aquafaba and some cream of tartar. You can also use lemon juice or lime juice, or you can leave it out entirely, but you want to let that uh, beat up until it's nice and foamy and then slowly add in some sugar and some vanilla these are meringue cookies and you want to get to stiff peaks um i don't know if that's quite what we were looking for i'm not the best at making these but uh, i cook them at way too high of a temperature and they fell flat so that was my own fault but i'm going to link the recipe in the description if y'all want to try it out this recipe was supposed to be a chocolate mousse and once again I didn't follow instructions and once again it didn't work out how it was supposed to and I tried to save it and it kind of worked out in a not really kind of way but it still got eight. But anyways you want to start out with the aquafaba again and the cream of tartar and if you don't have it you can leave it out or add in lemon or lime juice. Um, but like I said before, if you leave it out, you'll just have to let it go longer. And you want to make sure that it's nice and foamy. Mine was just starting to get foamy. And I dumped everything in at once. You want to slowly mix it in, like slowly add it in while it's still mixing. And I didn't do that, as you can see. But I'm adding in powdered sugar. This one calls for powdered sugar, I think, because you're not cooking it. And then some cocoa powder and vanilla and mine never foamed up i let it beat for 15 minutes and it didn't foam up be and i really think that it's all because of me not adding the ingredients in the correct way but at the end i'm going to add in some flour and bake them in the oven and turn them into a very dense cake or brownie. I mean, it tasted like a brownie to me, but it just was not a very good brownie. Which I can't make brownies anyway, so you know, I'll leave the original link in the description for y'all though. Jesus loves y'all and I love y'all too. I hope y'all have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye!